everyone. Uh, thank you for the invitation uh, to give this presentation in the opening of the conference. Uh, thank you for Professor Gamal uh, and uh, Dr. Nobi for this invitation, and I hope for all of you a successful conference. Uh, generally, my talk today will be about scientific research and university ranking, and I call it like reciprocal relationship by means that everyone is feeding to the other. So we have here to know how the research is affecting and the ranking of university or how any student or staff or anyone would like to join university to see does his research will be there like valuable and this will be based on the ranking of this university. The agenda will be today for first talking about the university environment, what is the required environment for a good university, generally for research. And then we are talking about importance of ranking. And after understanding why we need the ranking, we'll go for ranking methodologies, how many methodologies do we have and are all of them famous or required or known. And then lastly, we will link to the research outlook and finally with research message. And I will leave like more than five minutes later for any discussion required for members for sure are welcome. Okay, for the university environment, always the question comes like, what do we want for our university? Generally, everyone will think about this. We needed to have like world class university. And then we would like to discuss what is the definition of world class university. Everyone would like to claim, yes, my university is a world class. But for sure, it is not about claiming, it's about what the university has. And the second part will talk about generally how and what is the challenge that we have to make our university like world university, world class university. And we are talking about new realities of higher education, internalization, innovations, and what's about strategy planning for this. So for world class university, everyone will think about, yes, to be world class, you should have a very good teaching inside the university for your student, for sure, to join it. And also we need to have like a scientific research which is highly qualified inside the university and for sure to measure this you need to have it impact and its excellence on your society around you and how to serve the society however to do all of these three armies which is uh, research and scientific scientific research and teaching and the impact on society you need a very good management and a very good facility to achieve this and these are the factors are putting to classify world class university. It needs to be focused on research based on this. It needs to be focused on science. It needs to have a great facility facilities. Also, it needs to have a culture of excellence. It is not only about that we say, yes, we have some members with very good excellence doing research inside the university. However, you need the environment, the culture inside the university to be culture of excellence. You need to use generally to, to, to be from the top tier of the world ranking. And this is one link become today appear how to evaluate the world class university. Then you need to appear really in the top tier of the world ranking. And we'll talk later about what is the top tier of the world ranking. And you should have your university name as a brand name. As we know, all of us, if we say like example, Google, we say Intel, if we say this is the name of the company, it can brand names. So we need to have your university also like a brand name recognized by for quality. When we say, as example, for like export or MIT and so on, we these names become brand names. So all of the staff should work to have their university as a brand name recognized for quality. Okay, what is the challenge or no realities we have it for higher education? We have a several factors actually here. And these several factors we can say, changing is happening and it is uncomfortable. Everyone feels that when we have it change, this change is uncomfortable. And this is a human being feature. So, but we have to admit that the change is happening and we should work for this change. 
no such things as local without global. So we, all of us, we should work for globalization. And we understand that it is no more than anyone is working inside his, or in working on his desk inside his lab alone. He should cooperate with others. And we should also look about what, what is there for a global to compare with it. Quality is not assumed. I cannot assume and say, yes, my university is very good. My university has a high quality. No, it should be evaluated, assessed, and validated. And this is actually is done today through these ranking methodologies. Education is a public good with private benefits. We have to admit, we cannot say, okay, yes, education should be always public, no benefit. No, it should have some private benefit and you should admit this. However, this shouldn't be on the price of the quality. Private sector involvement in education is nearly universal. You can see it, maybe it's recently in Egypt. We have several private sectors working in education. However, it's worldwide everywhere. And this is something we have to admit today. Technology is step. It is defines the university today and challenge its future. If your university is not working on technology, and maybe this is linked to the conference name today of engineering and technology. So technology become should be everywhere. And without technology, we cannot solve that challenge as a problem for future. And so these realities should work today actually for the educational or higher educational. So if we look about internalization imperative and we see how everyone is looking to this, if we see how scholar is looking from its perspective to this, it's different from educational, from financial, from globalization. So from scholar as examples, all researchers say that science cannot be limited by national boundaries. Yeah, we can do here research in cooperation with anyone in the world if he, if he works with us with a good result or if he match our field. From educational perspective, we say culture competence are the important skills to have in an inter inter interconnected global community. So the most important to have a competence. This competence is very important to be based on the culture between the interconnected global community. And from financial perspective, we say, yes, we need fund and this fund should be allocated or this revenue for your university should be also picked up and diversity funding stream for this science. Globalization perspective, we say higher educational fundamentally develop connection between people and idea irrespective of nationality. It doesn't mean that it should be inside national. No, it's generally it become irrespective of nationality. You have to work between people and the ideas to get the good result in the view in, for your uh, teams. So the question, what is internalization? It, uh, internalization can be seen in different uh, perspective, as we said. It can be like integrated institutional commitment to do a very good cooperation and partnership between different places that strengths university. It's also from administrative leadership should be uh, agree and should be work and admit to have a structure that permits generally for their uh, parties of the curriculum, of the faculty, of the student to achieve this internalization, like student mobility, mobility like faculty policies and practice, like maybe bilateral programs, and also to agree to have their curriculum also for learning outcomes. Here we are taking one uh, sentence in by uh, John Atmans. It said in Nature in May 2013. He said that universities that don't engagement in international cooperation risks disfranchisement, and countries that don't nature research talent will lose out in time. So no way to leave generally internalization. You should be work to be international cooperation with all parties because this will be the most important for both for your university and also for your country. Moving to the second part about innovation. 
do we need innovation in higher education? For sure, everyone will say, yes, we need it. And this is true. If we look about this last 20 years, we have a technology become the main focus for innovation. If you have innovation, you have more technology. And even so, if we are taking an example of this COVID-19, what we happened today, we are seeing that generally we have previously all meeting was face-to-face, -face, all meeting even for the conferences, for business meeting, for companies and so on. And at the time was some limitations say that transportation, let us consider it cheap to meet. And when we say transportation is cheap, why we say it's cheap? It's cheap by means that the gaining we are taking from this meeting and the innovation we are building up together is more value than transportation. However, today we can say communication become free. So we can meet always online without traveling, without need for transportation costs to develop innovations that we are in need. Next, we say ability to harness data for decision making. Let us be true and we say that if any decision maker are taking decisions without having the required data, this, his decision will be wrong. So we should have in every generally from a small entity to very large entity, even if you are taking decision for your work that will result in paper or patent, you are taking this decision based on the data you are collect, based on the result you gain. And similarly, if you are taking a decision for structuring your university, generally you are like to take this data, uh, this decision based on the data that should be true and accurate for your uh, entire system. Educational has unlimited reach. Yes, everyone can take education outside the university, outside it, online, physical, anywhere. So it has unlimited reach. And we can claim that we have a golden age for internalization now. We can see it's easy for everyone. If I talk about a student, it's easy for him to have like a communication with some labs, professor, college, outside, in anywhere, and to start to cooperate with them for staff similar on the uh, range of uh, or the level of the universities done and more than this in level of companies. Taking some examples also about as example, Moore's law. Moore's law is related to who is working generally in electrical engineering and generally saying that computing power double every 18 months means that uh, this used always in uh, fabricated shape. For example, if you are doing a shape in one cubic centimeter that consume power X, we can double this power in the same size every 18 months. And this, you can see that this is a huge moving for generally electronic and electric engineering. Same as if you talk about ampere law, we tend to overestimate the effect of a technology in the short run and underestimate the effect in the long run. And this is really wrong. You should look about long run generally, not only short run. And also for the cancer, he said that never pit against the technology. Anytime you pit against technology, you will lose because technology will be the win. And this proves that all of us should work in the direction of the technology. So how we prepare for the future now, we are thinking about what is the pros and cons we have. We can say we have several pros like we have virtual environment or equivalent to physical. Today, we all of us start to see and uh, even work with hybrid educational and sometimes fully virtual courses, virtual conference, and so on. So virtual equivalent become to physical. We have intercultural engagement at a distance. We can have like this now, everyone in his office, in his place, in his country, and we have a very good uh, communication, access to the wallet, access for the wallet, 
you can today access to any data you need it. Also, if you have anything useful, it can be accessed for the wallet. Sustainability. Sustainability become one of the major and important, important aspects that everyone should take care in his decision, even for research point of view, all of us working today for sustainability and talking about renewable energy, talking how how we can uh, keep uh, uh, generally or replace the conventional energy types with the renewable one and so on, how we can keep more resources for new generation were coming later after us, not consume all of it now, and so on. And even for the decision we are taking when we are building university, we are building programs, we would like all to uh, work with the same terminology of sustainability. For the coins, for the coins, generally we have, we are out of comfort zone. Every one of us, if ask him generally how we'd like to do the meeting online, or would like to do it face-to-face, -face. we used to have more benefit with face-to-face. -face. And actually this will take some time if we decide to move to virtually that we'd like to have it face-to-face -face all time. Unknown and clear strategies for repetition and relationship building. And this is one of the major aspects today, how we build our repetition. How we build generally our names as a researcher, our names as uh, specialists, our names as a university, our names as a program and so on. More challenges there. And the question would be how we build our education and relationship channel with this virtual aspects. Engagement, superficial or one-sided. This is a question always, it can be from one side or is it really superficial generally here and what you should do with engagement i sometimes leave this question like open from one to one you think about what is the better to do it here and for sure all of us see that privilege of english so all meeting all thing is required to be done in generally in english language Moving to the last part of this, which is strategic planning. And always, as all of us understand, generally, when we start to do any strategy planning, we have it top down versus bottom down, versus, sorry, bottom up. And we say that, where are now? Where are we now? Where do we want to be? And then how we'll get there? And the structure comes here for this is that we look about how to building our organization capacity. We are taking, talking generally about first we have information and this form, this information, what is the structure and its process, policies, governance, purpose, culture, infrastructure. Because generally you, you cannot say, okay, I will do some of this and leaving others. If you are not understanding the culture, you will lose, even if you have a very good program or structure that you will do it, because it's based on different cultures that you, that you work in it. And if you are not understanding your purpose, how you will do all of this? You will do it for another purpose. And then you, have, you would like to have its policy that can achieve your purpose and you need to govern this. And then this implementation through the process and structure and all of this should be based on the information you have. So the key question for us, assessing generally World Class University will be some question like this. What do you know about it? And what's your, what your institute is doing? Do you know generally the big picture, the specific details? And this question always asking by ranking uh, authorities. They'd like to understand that people inside their institute understand the big picture and the specific details of the university and what's the culture of evidence that, is that you have it inside. Also the question, what incentives are in place? Is it explicit or implicit? Always we can do different incentives programs for our researcher, for our staff, for our employee, and encourage them to 
make our rank of the receipts better, and this should be done in different way. Some of them can be direct or indirect. Also, do you have like encouraging or this encouraging program inside? Is it internal or external? This is incentive programs. The third question can be, what are your relative strengths? You should understand what is your strengths and weak point. Sometimes you find some university are, to, are mainly related to medical stuff, as example, or some specific things in engineering. They understand where is their strength point and they put more funding, put their strategy around this so they can achieve it. So you need to have like elevator pitch to target each audience of these. What is your current focus for uh, improvement? So you understand now your strengths, you understand your weak. So what you will focus on and what is your next step for improvement of this? And these steps are generally very important to be seen by ranking facilities. As we talk now, we have the entrance for ranking. So the question will be really, why we need ranking? Does, ma does it matter really to have all this stuff for ranking? We always working for inside our university with teaching, we are doing our research and so on. No, yes. So some people say yes or no, but currently actually it become more yes. And these are like the pillars that required for the university ranking. If as example, start with the student, we can say when we have a choice for a student to go for which university, how he choose one of these stuff which is important for him and for his family, they are looking to the university ranking. So they understand how to choose. Also, we are talking about national policies. If I say, okay, I would like to do some policies for on the national level here, and I'd like to give some funding in some topics. To whom should I give this? How to select it? One of the ways it will be to choose the best ranking university, which is known in this field, and I give them this funding, or I ask them for this national uh, target to be done. Branding, yes. When you have a very good, I say, yes, I am one of the top 500 of the wallet, one of the top 100, or one of the top 10, you use this for your branding. And through this branding, you can pick more funding, pick more student, and so on. Another question would be quality for uh, enrolled student. Yes. Maybe you will have more enrolled student in any way. But the question, what about their quality? The good student, the student with high quality will choose the university with high ranking. So this is one of the reasons that university ranking is matter. Partnership, if I'm going now and I go to MIT and say, okay, I would like to do like partnership with you. He will start to search about me or pick information about me. Do you know, is it useful for him to do this or no? And for sure, if you are not in position with at least uh, acceptable level of ranking to be joined with him, this will not be done because this will be based on the partnership or based on the ranking also. If you are talking about monitoring and benchmarking, this is, will be something internally. If I'm saying, okay, I'm an Aswan University and they'd like to know where is my position, so to take this generally, I cannot say, yeah, I see myself as in very good position and so on. No, I should benchmark myself over other university. And how I do this, it's done through the university ranking. Also, if I'm talking about research orientation, one of the stuff we are doing here as I'm responsible for the international ranking office in Aswan University, we are looking about the research orientation we are trying to uh, put like incentives for some topics, which we know that world uh, is moving in this direction and this will improve our university uh, planning and our university ranking. So your decision for this research orientation also be based on this. The situational decision making, and as I give example, yeah, 
we are giving for our institute the data and they take a decision based on this. Data collection, for sure, if you are doing generally any ranking, you need all data about your visiting number of students, they are female and their male numbers, generally their distribution over the faculty, the distribution over the program, postgraduate versus undergraduate, researchers, paper, how many paper per every staff, and so on. So all data will be data collection in a very good way you have it. Finally, for talent, as you have a very good university, you can generally pick talent to be joined for the university easy. All these factors makes, yes, ranking matter, and we'd like to have ranking. And similarly, we say here, another answer for why you would like to join the circle. Should we, I do it alone, or should I join the circle? Yes, you need to be, because it gives you more visibility. With media research, with more than three, three trillion members are looking for this. The leading ranking in the world, it's the best research university. If I'm looking for what is the most or the first 10 ranking university, I will see them. They are the best research university, actually. Benchmarking and performance analysis for my place. And here are things the methodologies are different ranking methodology or institute. First, we are saying the most famous academic ranking producing generally uh, this uh, legal table. You can say Shanghai High, Times Higher Educational, QS, and US News. And these four are the most famous in the world that are taking. Another two famous, but they are not concentrating, they are concentrating only on research, just concentrating on all university like research, teaching, society, and so on. However, these are limited to research as Leiden and Genie Act. And the global performance is different somewhat in, from one to other, but all of them for these first four on the teaching excellence, the research excellence, the knowledge transfer, and international look. These are the global performance areas they are looking for inside the ranking. So generally for stakeholders of the ranking, as I say, we like to know who are our stakeholders. We see governmental, student, academics for sure, university leaders, industry income. As you have a good generally identify these and they are involved with you, for sure you can achieve good ranking. And this good ranking will feed back to them, will have more income from industry, more income from governmental, also more income as more students and the good students are joining you, more good academic are joining you, and also better leader will lead this. These are the performance indicators that they are looking inside the ranking. If you are talking about teaching, they are looking at the learning environment you are giving. When they are talking to research, they are looking to volume, ink, volume for publication, income coming for research, and your reputation as an investor for research. They are looking to citation of your research. Doesn't matter that you publish 100 papers with zero citation. Because this means that no one is, is interested in your research. So citation is the most important. So citation means research influence. International outlook, as this means that your staff, your student, your research, how it's moved. It is not only localized inside your institute, how it moves outside, how it circulates. And it gives you more better look. And we have finally like patent score, how many patents you have and how many of these patents are moved to be like product. And industry income also, this will be like knowledge transfer because when you work with industry, you will get money, but also you'll get knowledge transfer to industry, which is very important and they are looking for. For research outlook, we have said it's important for volume, income, reputation, and for citation. Data provided, which data they are based on, on for this research. They based on biometric data from Scobus and Web Science. Scobus is belong to SEVIR and Web of Science is uh, generally another institute, so they are different uh, two parts. You need as a researcher to assure that any publication or any piece of work that you will do will be appear on one of these databases or on both of them, because these are the database that 
will have generally impact on the ranking. And you need to look about the citation score for your journal. <coughs> Sorry. You need to look about the number of paper per faculty per your institute. And this is a very important factor for ranking. How many staff we have in this institute and how many publications they are coming. And as I said again, how many publication appears in the scope of, sort of science for these staff. Number of international co-author paper, they are looking, do you have cooperation and this is cooperation locally inside national your country or international also. This is another important. Another important factor that we are talking always about field weighted citation impact score. And this is very important because in previous time we say we have impact factor. This journal has very high impact factor in medical. I'm working in engineering. My impact factor is low. I'm working in maybe material or something other. It's more lower. So how we can compare this? So all these factors, the companies or this ranking way come with what is called field weighted citation impact. And they are dividing based on the, the score based on the subject. So this make it like normalized. And we all of us see today the, the quarterly system that we have journals Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, without talking to the impact factor. So this become one of the important. Total number of publication, and we say with international co-authors, a total number of publication over all the institute because they have like a minimum number for every institute to input or to be uh, enrolled for ranking should be achieved. This is an example for Scovus. Scovus is like a huge database. They have more than 86 million items inside, 16 million author profile, 7,000 affiliation profile, and so on. So some talks later we are saying about it uh, here, what we have. We say research has shifted from individual to research, to, from individual researcher to general grouping. So sometimes they are dividing the age of the university and say age one, age two, age three, age four. So in the fourth age was that we are talking about it now, they are talking about all research is shifted to be like co-author with international people. It is not limited. The highest quality research in the international network, not the home base. As example, when they, they compare like cases together, so what they are doing, they are comparing as example, in, if I talk about COVID-19, they are taking some cases from inside Egypt, some cases from UK, some case, and so on. And then we have a cooperation to compare all these matters and come with the research that join all these together in a better environment. Seek to create deep and sustainable partnership. Also, this is very important and recognize that some of these long-term relationships require efforts and ownership by senior manager. If your senior manager or university administration are not looking for this, this will be based on person that will be die after a little. And aim to create also highly international community. Way to go, require effective administration to remove general any barriers and also the formation of large interdisciplinary groups and if you want to produce high quality research, you need to invest in best research and teaching facility. You need to recruit and retention policies that attract the best global talent. And finally, there's some useful tips. Target partnership with high institution, generally with global rank. Organize conference jointly with more highly ranked university or specific topics which you play to your strengths. Multiple research cooperation, but contracting source around small number of strategic partnership. So you need to concentrate on the strategic partnership. Generally, outwarding mobility academic fellowship, visit international academic fellowship, and increase outfunding study abroad for this year's student. And thank you. And any question, and sorry if I took more time, I think I'm like one or two minutes after this. So should we have uh, any question of Novi or?